my name is Heather Umberhawker, and I'm going to be discussing functional electrical stimulation with patients with chronic hemiparesis um, to see if it improves their gait velocity. The article I'm discussing, discussing is titled Dual Channel Functional Electrical Stimulation Improvements in Speed-Based Gait Classifications, and it's uh, level three for evidence. Um, their target population was patients with chronic hemiparesis, and in the study, they had to have been at, at least six months post-diagnosis, but the average is about six years. And what they did was um, look at a dual channel functional electrical stimulation, and they put, they had a BioNess um, system, so it was a little more high tech than this, but it was a cuff that went over the common peroneal nerve and the anterior tibialis um, that would fire during swing to assist with dorsiflexion. And then they had a cuff that went around the hamstring tendons uh, to assist in stance uh, so that uh, knee hyperextension was prevented. So we'll just put these on here just to show you. And they also had uh, a device like this. Um, it was more computer-based though so that um, it was able to tell when they were in swing and when they were in stance so that they fired at the correct times. But this just goes in the heel of your shoe, like so. And it also plugs into the system. And when you take the force off of it, these ones um, would fire for dorsiflexion and swing. And then when force is placed on it, um, the hamstrings would fire. The specific parameters that they used for the peroneal stimulation um, was a symmetrical biphasic waveform. Phase duration was 200 microseconds and the pulse rate was 30 hertz. And for the hamstrings, they also used symmetrical biphasic uh, waveform. 300 microseconds was the phase duration and the pulse rate was 40 hertz. So what they did was take 36 subjects um, and they put them into the three groups based on their um, speed-based gate classification. Uh, there were 15 in the limited household ambulators, which would be less than 0.4 meters per second, 15 into the limited community ambulators, which is 0.4 to 0.8 meters per second, and they had six for functional community ambulators, which is greater than 0.8 meters per second. And they just wanted to see if this would help with their biomechanics and enough to get them into a higher level. Um, classification. So they had the patients um, progressively increase how much they were wearing this uh, over six weeks and by four weeks they were wearing it all day throughout the day. They um, did a pretest of a two-minute walk test with it and without it and then after the six weeks they did um, a test of the two-minute walk test to see um, their gait speed with and without it to see if there was any change between the two groups and how much it would help over time. Um, overall, they found um, that there are significant differences with all three groups um, pre and post between using FES and not. So um, for example, the subjects in the limited household community, limited household ambulation category, which is the lowest one, improved their gait speed by 33.3%. Um, which is about 0.3 meters per second, which is really good. The MCID um, for increasing gait speed is about 0 0.04 would be a small change. And then they found from 0.8 to about 0.16 based off the study um, that that's the MCID. So that would be a large increase. Um, they also found that all three um, improved Um, between trial one without FES to trial two post without FES. So even without it, their gait speed was improving. Um, but none of those were significant, but there were still, still relatively large improvements. Um, and the limited household and limited community ambulators also improved their gait speed when using FES between um, pre and post. And lastly, all three um, groups saw a significant difference between the first 
um, test not using it and the post test using it. Um, just for an example, the limited household ambulators had a 63.3% increase in their gate speed, which is really large. Um, as we know, an increase in gate speed, especially going from one speed-based classification to the other, um, is a large improvement in quality of life and an increase in independence. Uh, and also, you know, decreases your fall risk and um, obviously they're gonna have better uh, energy costs so overall, it could be very beneficial for a patient with chronic hemiparesis just to help them with cardiovascular function in their daily life. Um, if you interact with a patient like this, um, it's going to vary, vary, vary from patient to patient, but um, it could definitely help to give some improvements to them um, in a lot of areas. So I would recommend um, dual channel electrical stimulation for a patient if you come across someone who could use it. Uh, thanks and hope this helped.